Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oxford Area School District Board of Directors regular Hold meeting. Up. It's, it's getting started. I'll, there you go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Oxford Area School District Board of Directors regular meeting. Today is September 15th, 2020. It is approximately 7.04, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Sorry, my printer is making noise in the background. Uh, Ms. Dean. Here. Ms. Harrison. Here. Mr. Patterson. Here. Mr. Tenga. Here. Ms. Warren. Here. Mr. Gaspar. Here. Mr. Owens. Here. Mr. Robinson. I thought I saw Howard. Oh, Howard's here. Uh, uh, Mr. Ty. Here. All present. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the September 15th agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Mr. Time, may I have call a roll on this? Oh, that's correct. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. No worries. Slipping. Mm -hmm. Yay. Ms. Harrison? Aye. Mr. Patterson? Aye. Mr. Tenga? Aye. Ms. Warren? Aye. Mr. Gaspar? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Ty? Aye. Motion passes. Sorry, I had my mic off. Approval of the minutes. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the minutes of the August 11th, 2020 work session and the August 18th, 2020 regular meeting as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Jennifer Warren, second. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison? Aye. Mr. Patterson? Aye. Mr. Tenga? Aye. Ms. Warren? Aye. Mr. Gaspar? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Ty? Aye. Motion carries. Reports. Wait. I already changed that page. Hold up. Superintendent's report. Mr. Woods. Thank you. I'd like to take this moment to recognize Dr. Margaret Billings Jones, Assistant Superintendent, with her report. Okay, thank you, Superintendent Woods. Uh, good evening, members of the board, educators, and community members. It is my pleasure to provide the district report for the month. I would like to take a moment uh, to recognize the partnership that we've established with the Oxford Public Library for the past six years. Uh, thank you to Director Carrie Bessler and this year's Children's uh, Librarian Sarah Bear for all their assistance in circulating our required readings to the students, the students who needed the hard copy books. We shared over 200 of our books with the library for distribution uh, over the summer months. We appreciate and we value the public library partnership. As you know, we welcomed our new teachers and returning teachers to the 2021 school year. To address the challenges that we would experience, the district prepared the professional development in virtual instruction techniques, Microsoft Teams, digital resources, and provided time for the much needed collaboration 
to prepare all of our teachers to be ready to lead their classes remotely. Thank you to all the organizations, our PTO, our OAEA, our Oxford Education Foundation, all the community organizations who have come together to put all of our children first and moving forward together. This unity was in large part success of our opening of the schools in this new environment. I spoke earlier about our professional development in addition to our summer professional development, we continue to offer professional development to our teachers on Friday afternoons through September with open forums on virtual instructional strategies, Microsoft Teams, and content collaboration. In addition to continuing to support our teachers, we provide a community support. We distributed 483 hotspots and identified and purchased 100 more hotspots for families who do not yet have Wi-Fi in their homes. We connected these families to our schools and also provided community training on Microsoft Teams to parents so that they would be able to help their children with our school requirements. Our schools conducted their meet and greet sessions, as usual, with families but in the virtual setting. And here we can see the um, teachers in their meet and greet and really prepared for the, uh, the evening or the afternoon. On opening day, this was usual as well. And I say the usual part, it was the excitement of the students and the staff for the first day, obviously in a new format. As we walked around the schools, we could see the teachers who are working from their classrooms, highly engaged with their students. It was really um, quite a, a wonderful experience to see the teachers working so dynamically with students as they were interacting with them um, virtually. It was great to see their enthusiasm as we do every first day with a different look, but also missing seeing the students in our buildings. We would like to get your input on how things are going from your perspective. We have a teacher parent survey currently active. Teachers surveys were mailed to them. Parents are on our website. Please take a moment to complete the survey so we can continue to address any concerns and move forward together. Our technology department has been doing a wonderful job Mr. Mellinger, together with his staff, and I'd like to note them, uh, Linda Morse, Keith Reiner, Michelle Lefevre, and Hallie Darhauer. They have deployed, with school assistance, close to 4,000 iPads, and in the process of deploying 300 laptops, in addition to responding to help desk requests that involve setup, software, student information systems, digital platform hardware, and website assistance as presented here in the slide. Most of the help, as you can see, based on the pie graph here, surrounded the software, which included textbook, uh, digital textbook uh, availability, and account setup. This is all done to support the education of our students. Currently in the district, we have nearly 3,500 students in grades K to 12. This year we had nearly 300 new registrations. Our kindergarten is low this year. We expect that parents who have delayed the start of school for their five-year-old children will be registering with us next year. We have approximately 10% of our students receiving EL education because English is not their first language. And about 19% of our students receiving special education services. It looks to be this year's graduating class will again be over 330 students. Our participation for the first few days is reported here. Our attendance information was provided for our tech department based on our child accounting. The high school had reportedly 
participation, hens growth, approximately 91%, Hopewell at 96%, Nottingham at 95%, and Jordan Bank at 97%. Our first three days attendance was not taken at Elk Ridge, but we're working to try to recover some of that from the school. In addition to student attending school virtually, we continue to monitor student safety. As you know, the district participates in the Pennsylvania School Safety Program. Safe to say, if there is a threat to anyone's safety, you are reminded of our anonymous tip line to keep the school and all individuals safe. If you'd like more information on it, please visit www.safe2, the word, the number two, say pa.org for more information. In addition to the PA safety program, the district also uses Gaggle Real Safety in real time to provide additional safety to our students. New this year, based on our virtual platform, we're holding a counselor connection. All school counselors are meeting with students as a group and for counseling sessions as needed. Parents are encouraged to participate in career counseling sessions with their child and the school counselor. Counseling sessions are set up by appointment. In addition to mental health services, the district is supporting healthy foods for all of our children under the age of 18. Food distribution is at the Oxford Area High School on Fridays at 11 o'clock and at 3 p.m. for one and a half hours each time. Thousands of free meals are being distributed. This week, we expect to deliver 11,000 meals. You can see last week was over 7,500 meals. The meals consist of an entree, milk, juice, fruit, and veggie. If you would like more information, visit the district website at the Department Food Service. I want to especially thank uh, Allison Weir, our Food Service Director, and all of her staff for their hard work in preparing the food repeatedly, Mr. Madrin and our facility staff, and a special thank you to our Naval Reserves for volunteering their time to help our Food Service Department and the community. We appreciate their time and their efforts in helping us. Last, but definitely not least, we are entering into next three year comprehensive plan for our district. Our first meeting is scheduled for September 29th at 630. We look forward to your participation and the continuation of the good work of the district on behalf of all of our students. And with that, I conclude my report and I thank you for your time and your attention. Thank you, Dr. Billings Jones. Appreciate that. Um, so at this time, I'm also going to augment the report uh, in this section on, on two areas, really. Uh, one, athletics and one, school programs. And I may I may reserve school programs until that spot in the agenda uh, and just concentrate on athletics. As the board knows, uh, through the most recent guidance that I've sent out in the last 24 hours, I believe, uh, with the Chester County Department of Health, uh, they have backed away from their guidance on athletics and they have uh, essentially distributed that to the local uh, to make a decision. Fortunately, uh, with our current athletics plan that we have in place, we can very easily uh, move from that uh, volunteer practice to uh, mandatory practice if we continue to receive the correct numbers. Um, and by those numbers, I'm referring to Chester County numbers with the uh, PCR and the incident rate uh, falling into certain thresholds. Why this is important to do at this time, and I, I may have uh, Mr. Price, our athletic director, speak to this a little bit, but why is it, why it is important to do at this time is because if, big I, big F, if we want to 
participate in uh, anything beyond practice, meaning actual game schedules within the Chessmont League, uh, our athletes would have to practice uh, mandatory practices for three weeks prior to doing that. What I'm suggesting this evening is if all things remain the same uh, and we don't see the PCR rates increase along with incident rates increase, taking us to levels that may not be sustainable for athletics, uh, we would be looking at morphing our plan from voluntary to mandatory October 20, sorry, strike that, September 28th, so that we have the necessary three weeks in place so that when the Chessmont League starts or soon after it starts, our athletes would be able to participate in fall sports. Um, are there any questions from board members regarding that guidance uh, from the Chester County Department of Health and Oxford's actions uh, with athletics? Just Dave, just to be clear, so the guidance is we're not giving you any more guidance. Is that is that accurate? <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. OK. Mr. Woods, how does this play into, it's Joseph Todd, how does this play into um, teaching? So I, sports, we should be able to have in-person teaching, right? So I'm going to attempt to cover that in the next section, Mr. Ty. It's okay. just I wanted to make sure that I covered the athletics just the way our agenda reads. I wanted to cover that in athletics before we had our athletics and facilities report uh, during the committee reports. Uh, but I, I do have information on uh, on our instructional plan as well. There is there is somewhat of a tie-in, uh, and when I say somewhat, again, looking at the PCR rates and the incident rates, which I'll go over a little bit more in detail uh, for our instructional plan uh, after the committee reports. But there is somewhat of a tie-in. What this does, let me be very clear. That's why I said a big I, big F with actual athletic contests within the ch chess mod. What this does, if 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 we get favorable results uh, from September 28th uh, before and after with three weeks of, of mandatory practice, it enables the district to start uh, competition. It doesn't necessarily mean we will start competition at that point. It just enables us to do that. If we don't start the mandatory practices and we wait and we wait and we wait, uh, we may miss the season. Because what has somewhat occurred uh, throughout our county and throughout uh, some of the Chessmont League is that schools are starting to ramp up for mandatory practices. And whether they're going to keep them in some of the bigger schools and inter squad or whether they're going to seek schools out uh, remains to be seen. But they are starting the mandatory practices at, at some point in time in September, uh, various with the schools, uh, so that they are prepared uh, to start competition. And I wouldn't want to see Oxford be in a place, and I know Mr. Price doesn't want to see Oxford be in a, in a place where because we didn't have that time spent on mandatory practices, we were uh, without the ability to compete under PIAA in the chess League. Mr. Price, did I miss anything? No, I believe you uh, have it all um, and, and the dates are, are accurate. Um, the 15 days from nine from September 28th would um, it, the big if obviously, but that would allow competitions on October 16th. I guess that would be the the other date. And the fortunate part in our plan and our design of, of how we enabled our emergency plans is, is that we do have the time to, I'll use the word pivot again, we do have the time to pivot uh, very quickly and very nimbly uh, with our plan because it's, it's based on the numbers and it's based on our discretion. And, and I would say the same with our education plan as well. 
since the board approved uh, live instruction, hybrid instruction, and virtual instruction at the same time, uh, it allows us to be very nimble uh, to, to evaluate the numbers and to uh, work back into both athletics and more of a normalized education setting. I guess, uh, Mr. Woods, one, one other thing that we would probably want to be clear on is, um, and this is kind of bounced around today, but um, it's, this is kind of more for high school athletics as, as it doesn't look like we're going to have a middle school league for fall sports as all schools are kind of um, looking like they're going to stay internal in various different formats. Thank you, Mr. Price. Yes, at this time, this is just the uh, 9 through 12, correct? The 9 through 12 athletics. Uh, yeah, and that that concludes this portion of my report regarding athletics. Again, more to come on the educational front uh, in the next section that I get to report. Mr. Woods, Jennifer yes. Warren, I, I just have one uh, clarifying question. So maybe maybe this is why the big I, big F, and if the Chessmont League has n not met and changed anything. Um, currently right they're they're we're currently they haven't met to change what what we're doing currently is that correct that is correct i believe mr price the next meeting is friday is that yeah correct? the next meeting is friday and that's likely when um the, the the next motion will happen that basically says it's not a chestnut decision anymore it's a local decision okay thank you and, yep. and miss warren to, to speak to that in greater detail uh, rather than having several emergency board meetings, et cetera, or, or trying to get the information out. Uh, that's why we're kind of ahead of the curve here uh, because our meeting falls on this date. So we're trying to plan as far out as we can. Uh, again, so we have that nimble, that quickness uh, that we can make a decision since the board approved everything on the front end. We can make a decision and this is kind of informational as much as we can get the information out. OK, great. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Woods, Jen Harrison. Yes. Can, may I circle back to Dr. Billings Jones and ask a couple questions? Oh, Is my that, goodness, uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, I was really dismayed by the number of participate participants at the high school level. Um, so I was really wondering, is there a correlation between attendance and access to the internet at the high school level i'm not seeing it at the other level and is there i know we've done training for parents in teams has there been an outreach in the esl group is there a correlation there is there i'm just looking to see what can we do or is or are we catching up are those numbers improving yeah, um, Jen, a lot of students, because when you look at the other, that that just seems like a, a lot of people considering that's four grades, right? Um, we were looking at um, five days for the high school, so it's at 74% for the five days. The other buildings are uh, the first three days. That's what I was looking for. That typically you look at the first three days of enrollment. Um, so they gave me five. Linda was uh, Linda Morris, who is our technician, uh, was. Uh, calculating the high school and it's based on per period attendance. So she was having some difficulty with it, but she believes that's as good as uh, she had because initially she had a much higher percentage. So um, that's the percentage that we have currently. Um, what we have asked all the principals and we, we talked about this in regard to attendance that um, the administration, guidance counselors, as well as our social worker um, are to be contacting families of children that are not attending to find out why they're not. We're not, we're going to definitely follow up with them. So we're just not, you know, saying they're not coming. We're following up on what the reason is. We found, as I mentioned in the report, 483 families needed Wi-Fi, so they're connected, 485 or 483 it was. And now we found there's another 100 families that have requested it because they do not have Wi-Fi. So that could be part of the, um, the problem with it. But as far as it being all of our English language learners, we don't have that um, documentation. 
to support that yet. But we are we are following up on just as you're saying, um, and we will be looking at you know obviously there will be if they have access and they're just not coming, you know at the upper levels then we would follow through with our truancy. Okay. okay. And what about training for ESL families in Teams and and the software and um, you know particularly with you know the younger learners that may need help from mom and dad. Yeah, we do have um, we have two of our buildings right now that are uh, planning orientation with the um, EL uh, families, as well as our, our our one building, Nottingham has already held uh, parent forums. I believe they had 19 families attend, uh, you know, speaking with uh, Principal Yings Pyle, they had 19 families attend that. So there is a, an outreach to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our Spanish speaking families as well. And we'll continue that uh, with our uh, interpreter, as well as with our, our smaller groups with our EL teachers. Okay. And when will you have a next set of metrics on those high school students? Um, they're, they're running that. Um, we'll be looking at attendance weekly. I've asked our social worker, um, that's her main function, uh, to be able to look at the attendance and follow up on attendance with families. Okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for the question, Saracen. And so uh, the second issue very quickly that I want to go over is there is a parent survey on virtual instruction that is still open this evening, uh, will remain open through this evening. Uh, so far, we've had 537 responses as of this morning. That's obviously not indicative of the entire district, so this would just be uh, somewhat of a community uh, plea to uh, fill that survey out and uh, we will be providing uh, both the board uh, with the results of that survey and uh, once that happens we'll uh, redact some some uh, comments that are inappropriate and uh, uh, put that up on our web page so uh, that's kind of where we're at with the parent survey on virtual instruction it's still open so if you have not filled it out please do so that concludes this portion of the superintendent's report, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ty. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Financial reports, Mr. Tango. Be it resolved, the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the following financial reports. The General Fund Treasurer's Report, Revenue Report, Expenditure Report, the Cafeteria Fund Treasurer's Report, and the Capital Projects Fund Treasurer's Report. Do I have a motion to approve the financial reports? Bob Tanga, motion. Second. Jen Harrison, second. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Ms. Dean? Aye. Ms. Harrison? Aye. Mr. Patterson? Aye. Mr. Tango? Aye. Ms. Warren? Aye. Mr. Gaspar? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Ty? Aye. Motion carries. Student activity and athletic officials accounts, Mr. Tango. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the students' activities and athletic officials' accounts for Pensgrove School, the Oxford Area High School, and athletic officials' account. Do I have a motion to approve the student activity and athletic officials' accounts? Motion. Second. Eric Owens, second. Any discussion? All right. I just have a question. Um, if we're going to do mandatory practices and stuff, does that mean that the participation fees are now back on the table? Mr. Price? Sorry, um, I don't, I'll defer to uh, whoever's going to make that call. Um, I, I, 
I mean, we're going to be planning to have a season, so um, so long as we meet all the criteria, I would I would think so, but uh, I, I don't know what the answer is to that. Okay, just wondered. Um, roll call, Mr. Kinney. Any further? No, any other discussion? Roll call, Mr. Kinney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tango. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Tyler. Aye. Motion <laughs> carried. Payment of bill. Be it resolved. Oh, sorry, Mr. Tango. <laughs> Be it resolved that the actuary or board of the school directors hereby approves payments of the following bills. The general fund, $2,907,662. The cafeteria fund, $9,404. The capital projects fund, $31,915. And a payroll distribution of $1,210,553. Okay. Um, Do I have a motion to approve payment of bills? Motion. Jennifer Warren, motion. Second. Mark Patterson, second. Any discussion? Oh, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tanger. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Ms. Jones. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Uh, Most cares. Report of Intermediate Unit and Technical College High School Representative, Mr. Robinson. Okay, yes. I assume everybody can hear me. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. I can anyway. It's the first time I've used this laptop and uh this mute and unmuting business is uh, demanding of me very much. So, but at any rate, I uh, did have my wife do a good job of typing up my report, and it has been sent to all the board members, and that's a good thing because I'm sure you're not sitting there in anticipation of me reading all of the uh, information I had on my report, but I did want to uh, at least mention a couple of things, and there are four points. The first paragraph at the top deals with uh, John DeMillion and Greg Miller. John DeMillion is the director of the IT in uh, the CCIU, and Greg Miller is the director of technical support and systems engineering. And they had a presentation and showed us what was going on at the IU in the way of equipment and things of that nature. In fact, they uh, went over and we actually saw demonstrations of what they call the swivel, which is a robotic mount for iPads and cameras and smartphones that follows the teachers around the teacher around the classroom. And then we saw a meaning owl camera that provides 360 degrees coverage so that you get a better picture all the way around the classroom and things of that nature. We saw a digital tripod, which is similar to the stands that we see in our Oxford teachers' classrooms now. And uh, the approach that they are using in IU is they're considering the classroom as a studio approach, working closely with the teachers and uh, equipment to provide the best possible uh, environment for learning to take place. And then I checked with uh, the administration in Oxford and I found that Oxford it was not only prepared for this year's uh, virtual learning, but actually somewhat more prepared than some districts in Chester County. Because like uh, Dr. Margaret Billing-Jones mentioned, we had almost 4,000 
iPads already in use, and uh, there were uh, there are iPads and laptop for t laptops for teachers and students and stands in the classroom, and uh, the teach the what was unique I thought in Oxford was the fact that teachers have been given training and not only the teachers but parents and uh, uh, throughout the year last year even and throughout this year the teachers and parents have been uh, provided support and learning and training with uh, learning taking place so that they can help their students so i think Ox oxford is uh, rating very high in uh, being prepared for this virtual education business that we are in the middle of our second paragraph, my second paragraph, was the reopening. Dr. Friari uh, just talked about the, the meetings that they've had with like 400 stakeholders, including the students, staff, and parents, caregivers, about the reopening of schools. And uh, he is hoping, as we all are, that the downward trend in Chester County's cases, virus cases, continues. But if it changes, the CCIU has very detailed procedures on how various scenarios will be handled should they arise. The Chester County Department uh, is also involved, and they, uh, Dr. Ferrari introduced Dr. Uh, Jean Kastner, who is the director of the Chester County Health Department, and she spoke to the board regarding the connections and relationships that they, she's had and the health department have with uh, Chester County Schools. Uh, okay, and then uh, uh, she addressed the Chester County Health Department's recent recommendations that all public and private schools in Chester County begin their academic year virtually with the exception of special education, early childhood development programs, and career and technical education. And she explained that, <coughs> excuse me, in those areas, a physical school is central to all aspects of these students' growth and learning. And then finally, uh, the last point, you've heard me talk about Dr. Jackie Aris before, I'm sure. And I had to, uh, she was there and I had to, I had to include her retirement information on my report. So I'll just read a couple of statements there. Dr. Ferrari recognized Dr. Jackie Aris, who is, was, the CCIU Director of Student Services. She had the largest division in uh, the IU, of course, dealing with all the students in all the different areas and all the different programs. And she uh, retired after uh, 28 years of service. Dr. Jackie Ars is one of the most de dedicated and distinguished educators who always put students first in each and every interaction. Our staff, students, school, districts, and community will miss Dr. Aris, but wish her the best in her retirement. And I might say, uh, since I know some of the background in the retirement decision that she made, her husband has been very sick and she was coming any any time he had a bad day, he's at home, but uh, he's very sick and he has good days and bad days. And any bad day, she would uh, stay home and work from home. But then on the good on his good days, she was coming in to the IU and spending the day there. And after a while, she said that she felt guilty about you know, she doesn't know how many days he has left and she felt guilty. I'm not being there on his good days. 
So she said the only decision she could make was to retire and be home with him on his good days as well as the bad days. So I thought that was pretty special. And she is a special person. So that's uh, my report. Unless there are questions that I'll be glad to try to answer. Thank you very much. Mr. Robinson, I, my question pertains to, to last month, if I may. Um, you had handed out a packet to us for the uh, intermediate units, Chester County annual report. Uh, and I noticed underneath in their financial stats, uh, under the expenditures, the highest line item was 50 over 52% and it's labeled other services. Is there any way that you could get a breakout um, from them of what that may be? Yes, I could. I can very easily. Okay. That, no problem. Uh, I'm writing right now as we speak, I'm writing your question down and uh, it's 52% was yes, yep. under other? Yes, it's under, it's under the expenditures and it's under special education services, other services. Uh -huh. uh, do you know what page you're looking at? Uh, page 23. Okay. okay, yes, that would be at the end. Okay, yes, uh, right offhand, when it, if uh, special education is involved, I'm not surprised but I will look into it and get some details on that. I'll be glad to report next Thanks. month as uh, part of my report and also I'll try to look into it this week and give you some answers soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Mr. Robinson? Do I have a motion to accept the report of Intermediate Unit Technical College High School representative? Eric Owens motion. Second. Mark Patterson second. And I guess we skipped ahead on discussion, but any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. First, Ms. Dean. Hi. Ms. Harrison. Hi. Ms. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tangan. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Motion carried. Report of Chester County Board's Legislative Council Representative, Dr. Owens. Of course. Um, the board or the Legislative Council last met on August 26th via Zoom. Um, there were a number of things we went through. I'm going to, I sent the board the minute notes or the meeting notes from that meeting. I'm going to highlight a couple of things. Um, there was a presentation from the IU about board responsibilities under federal employment law, specifically the uh, Families First Coronavirus Response Act, and basically about emergency um, FMLA and some other expectations that boards have. Um, there were some time spent on the uh, USDA and the waiver that um, they had originally applied to distribution of food. And so as Dr. Billings Jones had presented in her um, presentation to the board, the uh, meals that have been distributed to families, that waiver allowed the district to um, bypass some expectations around checking for eligibility and things like that. The waiver was, accept, was set to expire at the end of August, but it's been extended, so that allows the district some flexibility to continue to distribute meals the way we had been. A um, couple of pieces of legislation that were passed since my last report. Act 38, which involves stopping for school buses, it allows for districts to actually um, receive some of the fines that may be levied against drivers who pass school buses while their lights are on. So that's interesting. Um, let's see. Act 75, which involves tax payments and um, collection of tax payments, property tax payments by districts. Uh, Act 73, which involves EKG testing for student athletes and allowing parents to request EKG testing when student athletes get their physicals every year. 
and Act 18, which involves uh, extending the deadline for employee clearances, uh, given the challenges that employees had getting fingerprints and other clearances done, that deadline's been extended to December 31st, 2020 for those who expired recently. Um, the only other piece, noteworthy piece, at least for me, um, from that meeting was about Keystone exams. Um, just a reminder to districts from the IU that Keystone exams are back in force for this year, although there seems to be some confusion about what that will actually look like or how those will actually be administered. But um, the guidance from last year where Keystone exams were sort of, I don't know, um, delayed or, or extended probably won't be happening this year is my understanding. Um, there were some other bills that we went over, but given the legislative um, session deadline coming up soon, there's some belief that a lot of those won't move through a committee or get to the floor. Um, but like I said, I pass that along to all the board members. So that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. I do have a question. This is Jennifer Warren. Do you want to wait for discussion, Mr. Ty? Sure, we can do that. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept the report of Chester County School Board's Legislative Council representative? Jennifer Warren, motion. Second. Second, Mark Patterson. Any discussion? Okay, um, this is Jennifer Warren. So uh, Dr. Owens, on the um, USDA waiver, uh, it says in the minutes that it, it's extended to September 30th. Um, does that mean that that starting the first week of October that we would have to go back to a different distribution? And I'm assuming that would be the one where there's ID shown um, and the, the children need to be in a certain school uh, for the remainder of the time that we're virtual. That's a great question, Ms. Warren, and, and I apologize. I didn't go over that very well. Um, that actually was extended beyond September 30th, but that that happened since the Legislative Council meeting, so I caught that in the news. Um, and perhaps Mr. Cooney may have a little more detail about when that waiver has been extended until, but I know it has been extended beyond September 30th. OK, thank you. Sure. Sure. You know, and I don't know. I know that it's been extended as well, and I don't know exactly what the deadline is, but you're um, suggestion that if indeed that does run out before we come back that is accurate uh, we would unfortunately be in a position where we'd have to go back to what we did before only because you know once that waiver runs out we no longer have um, a reimbursement and also really the authority to serve food to, put to uh, students that aren't in our school so um, it's a great thing that's been extended i know that um, allison is watching that closely um, you know and, and, but if it ever did lapse before then that that is true Thank you. Well, Dr. Owens, I have a question. It's on page two of your report. Mm -hmm. Letter E, the Emergency Family Medical Leave Act. Number four, employers must provide the employee with leave under Emergency Family Medical Leave Act. The first 10 days are unpaid and up to an additional 10 weeks paid leave. They I have think to have leave time accumulated in order to use that and get paid for those, correct? Right. I, I, that may be flipped around, and I apologize for that. that so my understanding of this, and, and again, it's not my area of expertise, is that an employee gets 10 days of paid leave, up to 10 weeks of unpaid leave, um, and, and if they wanted to get paid in some period in that 10 weeks, they would need to have accumulated leave. Um, but and I, I may be messing that up a little bit, but I think that's the, the way the law reads. Why don't <clears throat> sorry to interrupt. Why don't for clarification? Why don't we uh, I'll get a uh, something out to all the board members exactly what that is uh, with the FFCRA and the EFMLA uh, because it does involve uh, payment beyond those two weeks. Uh, and under the EFMLA, we don't get into the accumulated leave. Uh, but I'll, I'll get out a uh, prior to the next board meeting. We'll make sure everyone's in uh, 
full understanding of FFCRA and EFMLA and what that means to our employees. Thank you, Mr. Woods. I think after 30 minutes of that presentation, I was more confused than when I went in. So, <laughs> so I was saying something written rather than an explanation would work better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Roll call, Mr. Kinney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tengen. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Dye. Aye. Motion carries. Sorry, I keep whacking my mic by accident. Uh, report of liaison with Oxford Parent Teacher Organization. I have had none. Report of Athletics and Student Activities Committee, followed by the Report of Facilities Committee, Mr. Gaspar. So we didn't meet on either. Um, Mr. Woods filled you in where we're at, and uh, Mr. Price, on where we're at so far with the athletics, but uh, that's all we have to report. Thank you, Mr. Gaspar. Report of Finance and Budget Committee, Mr. Tenga. We did not meet either. Um, maybe we will meet before next month, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Tenga. Report of Policy Committee, Ms. Warren. Thank you. We did meet on the 15th, um, during which we discussed the amendments to policy 6350, which is the live stream video policy. This is the second reading of that policy. We also discussed policy 4520, professional leaves of absence. Uh, we notified the committee that the deadline for medical leaves of absence had been suspended at the August 18th general meeting. Um, I do believe that we will be having a first reading for that next month. Um, and then we will have our next meeting um, October 13th at 6.30. Thank you, Mrs. Warren. Report of board in service and board goals. Um, within the next day or so, you're all going to get an email from me showing what the board in service and board goals were last year. And hopefully you can provide me some incentive and some ideas to redo those board in service and board goals for this coming year, which by the way, will be due for the next board meeting in October. And I'd like to thank Lisa Kell for reminding me of this because I totally would have blanked if she had not brought that to my attention. Report of school programs, Mr. Woods. Thank you, Mr. Ty. Uh, as I indicated in a prior report, um, as, as you all know, uh, the uh, Chester County Department of Health has recommended that we be virtual in, un, until October 9th. And part of the metrics that the Oxford Area School District will use as well as the rest of the districts in the county to a degree are on the Chester County Department of Health webpage and that is the PCR data uh, test PCR test positivity data I should say and the incident rate uh, per per 100,000 in the county as well as looking the incident rate per 100,000 in the Oxford Area School District and some surrounding counties if we can get that information. Uh, currently there was a spike up in the uh, PCR rate uh, for week one. It's a uh, four week uh, average and we look at the county data uh, sitting at 42. Uh, the Oxford at uh, for incident rate 60.54 for Oxford School District and for the county this past week 69.92 uh, PCR rate of 6.37. So it puts us somewhere in the moderate and high category uh, with the latest uh, week and the indications are that that will probably continue that upward trend. However, all that being said, each Friday these numbers come out each Friday. I look at the numbers and, and fit them into the chart. Um, again, with that October 9th date in mind, 
uh, that would be the last date that I would look to determine uh, what our PCR and our incident rates are in the county and also the Oxford Area School District. Um, with that October 9th date in mind, uh, I would give two weeks notification if the numbers are, are uh, falling within the, the moderate range on the community transmission chart, uh, we could potentially start back uh, to a hybrid environment for our K to 2 October 26th. Again, giving two weeks notification for parents and, and community members to make sure that they get uh, uh, all of their plans in place. And again, that, that's not in stone. These are all moving targets uh, because they're based on uh, the community transmission. So uh, if we can get back our K-2 in a hybrid environment, uh, October 26th, I would then wait another week, look at the Friday averages and look to move grades three through six back November 2, which is essentially starting a new quarter. Again, on this same plan, uh, looking to then bring back all of the secondary 7 through 12, November 9th. Um, so that's, uh, I know a lot of people in the community have been emailing both you and I uh, about when can we start to make these moves? When can we start to adjust? And one of the reasons I bring this up tonight is because uh, the Chester County Department of Health has removed the three week uh, consecutive decrease in community transmission in their categories. Uh, so we're really back to straight community transmission and meeting the thresholds uh, for the incident rate per 100,000 and PCR test positivity rate uh, to direct our movement for the instructional program. All this being said, uh, if we continue to see uh, the increase that we've seen this past Friday, which was quite a jump, um, this could all be derailed. But we are monitoring these, uh, these numbers and you know, we have four weeks to monitor yet before uh, we can make a decision. And I, I would add also, again, like I did with the athletics, the board in its wisdom has authorized uh, the administration uh, through their approval of our plans to be very nimble and very quick in, in making these decisions based on the uh, incident rates, uh, same as athletics. We want, as a community, as a stakeholder group, as a board and administration and teaching staff and regular staff, our students in the building in person and at least in some fashion and we will do everything that we can to work toward that goal. Uh, as always, we need to measure the entire system and our ability to be able, able to provide in-person education. And there are some variables in that that our district does not control. But in order to make everyone feel comfortable with in-person or hybrid instruction, I think it's essential we follow the recommendations of the County Department of Health and their transmission chart uh, to make sure that if we make a decision to come back, uh, again, as early as October 26th for K-2, our staff is confident in returning to the building because that plays a major role in the district's ability to offer our hybridized instruction plan. I'd also like to take this time to thank the board, the community, the staff, the teachers, 
and the administration for their hard work in opening the buildings and giving meaningful lesson plans, uh, meaningful instruction in the best way that they can. And we've heard both sides of that coin through our through what I've read in the parent surveys that uh, I, I keep track of, but aren't done yet, so I don't want to share the results. Uh, we've heard both sides of this is horrible to this is wonderful and somewhere in the middle of everyone's doing their best. And I can assure you that everyone is doing their best with our entire population. Um, and I'm, I'm very pleased with with everyone's efforts to date. So that's an update on our school program and probably our, definitely our most essential school program, the education of our students. Are there any questions at this time on my report? Mr. Woods, I have a question. Joseph Ty. Um, the survey that we sent out prior when we were asking about hybrid versus virtual, I think the results of that were like 65% of the community wanted hybrid and 35 wanted virtual. Is the, the survey that's ending tonight, is that asking basically the same questions or is that what we're looking for? Or? No, uh, the survey that's ending this evening was a compilation of, of questions that the board supplied to us. Uh, basically, how is it going? Uh, what what concerns uh, in, in a free right area do we have with virtual learning and and how's the virtual learning going at this time uh, we didn't ask at this stage uh, how many people are interested in the in-person hybrid versus the virtual uh, we have those results but it would be uh, to our advantage to send that survey out again uh, as we prepare uh, and look at the metrics leading up to October 9th to determine after a period of time in virtual what the percentages are again. Thank you. Um, one more question. Can you just ballpark the percentage of teachers that are actually teaching right now from their classrooms? Uh, plus or minus 10, 30 percent. OK, so it is still a pretty low number. Uh, it, it varies per building. Some buildings are, are much greater. Uh, they have less teachers, so they're going to be much greater. Uh, but uh, very pleased with the amount of teachers that are uh, teaching from the building and, and from home, pleased with everyone. But uh, I will say that it does present challenges. And it also presents opportunities. So the challenges that I'm talking about are, are, you know, we're tasked with social distancing, mask wearing. Uh, that's all day for our staff and and uh, uh, there have been times that that collaboration may have gotten a little too close with our staff coming in because we're human. Uh, we want to collaborate. It also provides us with opportunities as making sure our filters will work correctly uh, for a hybrid type of instruction, making sure our internet uh, connectivity and, and, and the ability to be robust. Uh, with all of our digital learning uh, from from our actual physical plant. And that's why it's also important. Uh, one of the reasons anyway, it's important to phase our, our start date. Some districts may not. I believe it's important for us to phase our start date uh, with our younger kids first and then moving through the continuum uh, to the secondary because that's going to give us a real. Real time snapshot of our technology capabilities. While we believe we're OK, we don't know what we don't know. And garnering information from around the region, uh, from around the state, uh, sometimes we have to modify our filter, for example,
because it may be slowing down uh, when we're all in or we have a large group in. It may be slowing down our ability to connect. Uh, and I'm sure Sean Mellinger's listening to this. He's probably shaking his head. Oh, yeah. But uh, uh, there's been some pros and cons. And uh, everything is a learning learning curve for us with this with this environment. Mr. Woods, Jennifer Warren, I have a clarifying question on, on something you said um, about the Chester County Department of Health. I think you said they've removed their three week trend um, guideline or something along those lines. Yes. Do, so what are they current? Is it just week to week? Is it just what a weekly trend or? So. It, it's a little bit beyond just week to week as it's a it's a four week uh, look back. Okay. So if, if we look at the charts. Give me a moment. If we look at the charts, uh, there's there's a, it's a seven day period of time, week one being most current all the way back to week four. And then there's also a testing look back window, if you will. Uh, if that makes sense, because test results don't occur the day that they're taken. So that's there's a look back there as well. Um, so if we total the last four weeks, the overall Chester County positivity rate is 3.69%. If we take week four, 2.54, week three, just working up closer to today, let's say 2.72, uh, week two, 3.48, and week one, 6.35. Uh, and, and with that look back, Mrs. Warren, we haven't hit the Labor Day holiday as of yet. Correct. And that's why the, the start for the virtual start up until October 9th was put in place. But we, again, some of the metrics that I've seen, I don't want to explain how I've seen them, but some of them that I've seen are, are looking at an increase uh, okay. over the next several weeks. And in fact, yes, the, the three week consecutive decline was, was uh, removed. It's my understanding that was removed because uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, uh, but that wasn't coming down straight from the Commonwealth of, uh, of Pennsylvania. So uh, very, very similar to the removal of uh, the language from the Chester County Department of Health on athletics. Uh, the, the power always resided with the school district, and it's my understanding that the county wanted to make that very clear, so they removed that from the that that portion of the plan. And <clears throat> excuse me, would I find that in the document that you emailed out last night? Is that is that where I'm yeah. sorry, I had a chance to look through that clearly. Oh, that sorry. is correct. Okay. Um, so that would be three of thirty two, September fourteenth. Uh, and. So there's still language in there. It's highlighted. So all the, the changes are highlighted. And one of the highlight sections says transitioning to a more in-person instructional model can be considered when thresholds for incident rates and positivity are met for three consecutive weeks per the table. So there still is that three consecutive weeks. Um, but that has changed from three consecutive weeks of decline. OK. So okay. the decline being the keyword. Correct. OK. Uh, and I, I before, you know, before you read that and then said, you know, what's Wood saying here? Uh, three weeks is still there. It's just. Meeting within that threshold rather than a decline for that threshold. And okay. so this this information serves two purposes. One uh, to inform the board that you know, every Friday we're looking at those metrics. We're looking for those three weeks of consecutive metrics, and that's how we'll make our decision on starting back. And 
why wouldn't we just start back right after the ninth is because I believe people need time. Uh, because that ninth is, is probably going to fact October 9th is probably going to factor in uh, significantly uh, in that three week look back. OK, OK, thank you. You bet. Any further questions? Mr. Woods, I just want to say that I think you, your staff, all the teachers are doing a marvelous job. Um, it's got to be awful teaching from home. I couldn't even imagine it. I can't do my job from home successfully, so I give them kudos for that. And for all the teachers that came into the school, I think that's fantastic as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Woods. Old business, Mr. Cooney? We have none. New business, recognition of persons who requested to be placed on the agenda. There are none that I'm aware of. Personnel, Mr. Woods. Thank you. I'd like to recommend the attached professional personnel. Do I have a motion to approve the attached professional personnel? Bob Tango, motion. Second. Jen Harrison, second. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tango. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Mr. Kerry. Personnel non-professional, Mr. Woods. Thank you. I'd like to recommend not the attached list of non-professional personnel. Do I have a motion to approve the attached list of non-professional personnel? Howard Robinson, so moved. Second. Second. I have Mark Patterson, a second. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tango. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Or scares. Awarding professional contracts, Mr. Woods. Thank you as required by public school code section 1108. I've certified the board, Mr. Cooney, that the work of the temporary employees named to be lower satisfactory since they have now completed their probationary period. The code requires Mr. Cooney to note that they have attained professional employment status in the board records. They'll be notified of this fact and offered a regular contract of employment. This action is ministerial, power of the rating of temporary professional, and certifying them for 10 years reserved to myself. No board action is involved. Mr. Cooney will place the following names in the MIMS as having attained the status of professional employee. Matthew Applebaum, Sharon Kane, Daniel Duncan, Courtney and Carcione, Elise McDevitt, Diane Miller, Jacqueline Powell, Jacqueline Rupert, Bridget Salzberg, Hannah Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Consent agenda. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the following consent agenda items. Section 1302 students. Students named on the attached list to be considered a resident of the school district for the 2021 school year in accordance with Section 1302 of the Public School Code. Course Supplemental Technology. Temporary approval of the Course Supplemental Technology as per the attached list. Special Education Contract. Contract between the Oxford Area School District and the Timothy School for the 2020 school year regarding student ID ending in 4706 as per attached. E-rate consulting services. Proposal from KSL Group for administration of the E-rate year 2021-2022. Course approval. Approval to take two courses at Drexel University is granted to David A. Woods as per the superintendent contract dated July 1st, 2016. 
Memorandum of Agreement, Oxford Educational Foundation. Memorandum of Agreement with the Oxford Educational Foundation for the recruitment, training, placement, and supervision of volunteers in the schools for the 2021 school year. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Motion, Mark Patterson. Second. Jennifer Warren, second. Any discussion? Mr. Cooney, I know I asked this before and it was probably about a year ago, but could you briefly explain what the E-Rate Consulting Services are? Certainly. So um, we've been using this particular organization for many years. Um, and what they do is um, they help us facilitate um, getting reimbursement through the E-Rate program on the different purchases and services that we make every year. So every single year, um, the E-Rate program comes up with new guidelines as far as what qualifies and what are your percentages of reimbursements. So they work in partnership with us to go through all of our purchases and all of our services to ensure that we're getting the maximum reimbursement under E-Rate based on those year's guidelines. And then they just take a little skimming off the top for it? That's right. They get a percentage of our savings or our refund. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further discussion about items on the consent agenda? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Sorry, muted, Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tango. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Todd. Aye. Motion carries. Superintendent's goals. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the superintendent's goals for the 2021 school year. Do I have a motion to approve the superintendent's goals? Eric Owens motion. Second. Bob Tenga, second. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Cooney. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harrison. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tenga. Aye. Ms. Warren. Ms. Warren. Aye. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Motion carries. Memorandum of Understanding. Be it resolved that the Oxford Area Board of School Directors hereby approves the Memorandum of Understanding between the Oxford Area School District and the Oxford Area Education Association as per attached. Do I have a motion to approve the Memorandum of Understanding? Bob Tenga motion. Second. Jen Harrison. Mark Patterson. I have Jen Harrison on a second. Any discussion? We'll call Mr. Cooney. Mr. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harris. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tenga. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Motion carries. New policy, second reading. Mr. Woods. Thank you. This is the second <laughs> reading of uh, new policy 6350 live stream video. Again, it's the second reading. Um, Mr. Ty, you can run your discussion. Do we need a motion to accept these? Or are they just. You do not. This is just the second reading. Any discussion on the second reading of policy 6350? Roll call, Mr. Green. Um, sure. Ms. Dean? Aye. Ms. Harrison? Aye. Mr. Patterson? Aye. Mr. Tenga? Aye. Ms. Warren? Aye. Mr. Gaspar? Aye. Mr. Owens? Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. 
policy procedural change, Mr. Woods? Thank you. And let me apologize to the uh, policy committee uh, because this this procedural change is exactly that. It's a procedural change at our last policy committee. I failed to say that and I said it was a policy change. Uh, so uh, this actually you would vote on and this is changing the medical sabbatical, uh, removing the April 1 deadline uh, because that is not germane for the medical sabbatical. Uh, but it stays in for all other sabbatical leaves. So this would actually be a change in the administrative session of the policy. Mr. Ty. Do I have a motion to accept the procedure, procedural change for policy 4520 professional leaves of absence? Motion, Mark. Second. Second, Bob Tango. Any discussion? Roll call, Mr. Kenny. Ms. Dean. Aye. Ms. Harris. Aye. Mr. Patterson. Aye. Mr. Tenga. Aye. Ms. Warren. Aye. Mr. Gaspar. Aye. Mr. Owens. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Mr. Ty. Aye. Mr. Harris. <laughs> as always, a copy of all these policies is listed is available in the administrative buildings 125 Bell Tower Lane, Oxford PA, for examination and comment. The policies can be viewed on the website www.oxfordisd.org. Public is encouraged to stop in and read these policies or visit our website. Closing items, correspondence, Mr. Cooney. Uh, we have one. It is a letter that is attached um, from the Waterway Church regarding tax forgiveness. Brian, do we have an amount on that? Not yet. Um, so I and the folks from the county were working to get me that. Um, I imagine I'll have it any day. And the reason we don't have it is that there's certain interest that's accrued after a certain period of time that we don't actually assess. Um, that's kind of a, out of our league. So I don't have all the tax or all the fees and interest related. And this assessment was on their vacant land there on Waterway? That's my understanding. Mr. Cooney, is this going to come up again for a vote then? So once I have more information, I'll certainly have that shared with the board. Um, as of right now, it's just a correspondence. There hasn't been a recommendation made from the administration um, as we don't know what the, you know, what the total value would be. And also, um, you know, tax forgiveness is of this uh, um, in this manner is sometimes fairly rare, but at this point, um, you know, it's our duty to share it with the board, and we'll we'll have more on it later. Any other correspondence, Mr. Kuhn? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Calendar. Any additions or changes to the calendar? I have two additions, Mr. Ty. Uh, policy committee will meet on Tuesday, October 13th at 6.30. And the ad hoc personnel committee will meet on Tuesday, October 20th at 6.30. Mr. Woods, and that ad hoc personnel committee, is that going to end up under reports or is that something that is um, more towards an executive session? Portions of it will end up under reports. Anything that uh, needs to be reported in executive session or omitted can be done as such. Okay. Calendar. Tuesday, October 13th, policy committee 630. 
these are all to be determined locations. I'm not going to keep saying that. Um, work session at 7 p.m. Same date, Tuesday, October 13th. Tuesday, October 20th, ad hoc personnel committee, 6.30. Regular meeting at 7 p.m. Announcement of executive sessions. Uh, Mr. Woods, correct me if I'm right, wrong, but I don't think we had any. We did not. Follow up to community questions and concerns, Mr. Cooney. Um, I have none. I have none either. All right. Um, adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Steve Gaspar. Second. Danny Hudson, second. Thank you, John. Motion by Mr. Gaspar, seconded by Mr. Harrison. Harrison, meeting at Oxford Area School Board of Directors is adjourned. Thank you all. Have a great night. Everybody stay safe. Thank you, Joe.